Welcome fabricators. You want to be able to trigger an event when a flat file lands in your Azure Data Lake Blob storage account? Well, I got great news for you. It's here today in Microsoft Fabric, and that's what we're covering on Tales from the Field. Exciting times. As soon as Microsoft Fabric became a product, one of the first questions I was asked was, how do I consume a flat file and ingest it? How do I use the storage events that I've already built processes for that I may be using in Snaps Analytics or with an Azure SQL database to be able to consume data when it lands on a storage account to be able to begin ingesting it? Well, there's a reason we have everything built into Microsoft Fabric, and we're actually going to use real-time intelligence. Will Thompson had a great blog announcing this. He also announced the capability for alerts. We're going to save that for another day. What we're going to tackle today is how do we ingest that data? So a quick example, I've got flat file information for Tales from the Field. It's our monthly statistics that I brief the guys on whenever we have our meetings. I want to ingest that into a Fabric Data Warehouse so I can build some nice Power BI reports off of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this from start to finish where I put my data into a storage account. I use the event process to be able to consume it. I land it in the data warehouse. Before we go any further, if this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesdays, we either have a live stream with a product group or we have the Azure Data Community Roundtable celebrating the creators in the Azure Data Community. Well, that's enough of this. Let's go ahead and get over that great content. All right, I'm starting out my desktop. I've got my Azure Storage Explorer open to my storage account, Bball Fabric, and I've got all my flat files, my CSV files, uh, one per month since we started the, ch the channel back in September 2022 with all of the relevant information that I need to uh, create. Now that I've got this set up, I can go over to SSMS and I can create a table. I've got a Fabric Data Warehouse already provisioned, Tales from the Field, and I'm creating my table, Monthly Stats. We'll go ahead and run this, and this will create the empty table. I'm going to put a quick select statement in there for the table. We'll use this a bit later. It's empty right now. Nothing's coming back, but that's going to change. Now, let's go ahead and let's flip over to Microsoft Fabric. I'm in my Fabric data pipeline, and I'm going to start out with the trigger preview. When this opens up, I'm going to say select events for us to monitor. And now I'm going to select my subscription, and you can see connect to an existing Azure Blob storage account. And then I'm going to select that storage account. I'm going to edit my event stream name. I want it to have something other than the generic name. I'm going to say TFTF Azure Storage Event Stream. Click Next. This gives me a whole lot of different events. As a matter of fact, I have more there than I initially have in, have in ADF. Now, I don't need all of this. I don't want all of these events to trigger something. So I'm going to get rid of them. I really just want Microsoft Storage blob created. So when I upload a file and a new blob is created, it will respond and it's going to execute my pipeline. I'll leave async oper operation initiated as well, just to show I can have multiple. I could put all 10 in there. Uh, but if I want to edit anything, it's going to cause issues. We have filters. Not covering that today, but good to know we have them. Go ahead and click Next. And then we'll go ahead and create this source. This will create the event stream that will be pulling in our data in that automated fashion. Now what we need to do is create our alert. So I'm going to go down to the save location under my workspace. And I'm going to say, here's my name, TFTF uh, storage trigger. And I'm going to click create. Once this is created, I can go ahead and close the alert. We're using real-time intelligence underneath the covers to be able to give all of this. I go to activities and I get set variable because what I'm doing is I'm going to surface up the variable name for my file and I want to be able to get to it. Let's go ahead and let's create a new um, variable. We're just going to call it file name. That's exactly what it, what it is. So we can dynamically read from this and I'm going to use add dynamic content. I go to trigger parameters, file name. It covers everything I need. I don't have to edit this. I can just go ahead and click OK. It adds this to our pipeline and we are good to go. Next up, I want to create a copy data activity. I've got my file name. Now I need to copy it. I'm going to drag the on success arrow so they're connected. Um, and then I get my copy data. I go to source. I'm going to go ahead and create a new source where we go to my data lake, uh, my Azure Blob account. So I go to view more sources. I can go ahead and click on Azure. And then I'll see very quickly uh, that I get Azure Blobs up at the top. 
Now it's going to detect a connection I had before. Remember the format of this, but then I'll go down and I'll say create a new connection. We're going to go to our uh, uploads container and I'm going to get my account key. I go over to my Azure uh, account under my, my storage account and I can get my key and I can then come back over to Microsoft Fabric and we can put the account key in place so I can authenticate to my blob storage. Now that this is in, we click connect. Once the connection is created, I can go ahead and I can do a little bit more refining. I'm going to uncheck recursive and I'm going to select the uploads folder. There's nothing in there yet. I haven't created any other folder that we're going to. So I'm going to enter the name of what the folder will be that we're going to upload to TFTF monthly stats. And then I'm going to add my file name. I go to variables. I get the variable we define file name. I click OK. Now, if everything was named correctly, this would work just fine but it's not, and I'm going to cause an error because I want to step through that with you. We're going to go to destination first, though, and we're going to go ahead and go to our lake house, and we're going to select our table that we just created earlier in SSMS, TFTF monthly stats. Now, this starts to look good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save it, but I've got a bit of an error. If you're paying attention at home, I missed something. I didn't change the file format. I left it at the default of binary. It needs to be text delimited. That fixes it. We can go ahead and run this. So once we save this, let's come back over and let's trigger it. I'm going to take my September 2022 file from our first month ever, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy it right over using Storage Explorer, and it's going to upload that file. That should trigger my pipeline. Let's go see how it worked. So I go to Run. I go to View History. I can see that it's not started, but it was triggering. And there it is. I can see it's in progress. The set variable worked. Uh, our copy data is in progress. We refresh this, and I failed. Now, why did I fail? Well, let's look really closely at this. Month number not found in SQL DW table. What the problem is, is I have a disconnect between the month number name and probably a couple other columns in my CSV file format, and then what I actually have in my table. You can see I did month number all together, month underscore number. So how do I fix this? Well, I need to get the schema imported. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my source. I'm going to get rid of the variable. I'm going to browse and I'm going to go directly to the file that we uploaded. Now, I'm not going to actually insert this data, but I'm using this to be able to do mapping. I come over to the mapping column. I do import schemas and you can see there's my error. I have several columns that do not match with the naming convention that I have in my flat file. So I need to change that. This allows me to be able to draw that correlation. And also, it takes these data types, because again, this is a CSV file, so everything's a string coming over. And you can see I've got integers, I've got in varchar, I've got small ints, uh, I've got all kinds of different data. Now I'm going to come back, I'm going to remove this file, because I don't need it anymore. Again, we're not going to import the data directly from the file. I want this to still be dynamic. I put my variable back in place, I click Save, and it's a good thing I didn't do that on delete condition, right? Because I need to put this file in again. So I'm going to get rid of it. Let's go ahead and delete it. And once this is gone and cleaned up, we're going to drag it back over and let's see what happens. Did we update September's 2022 stats? Let's go to our run, our view history. I can see first one failed, second one's triggering and executing. And it's in progress. Let's see how this goes. Click a little refresh. Uh, maybe another refresh. Magic. Oh, I love it. There's that fabric magic. It worked. Now let's check it out. Let's rerun our select statement. Boom, more magic. There's my data. My data is sitting there in my Fabric Data Warehouse, and I didn't have to do a thing. All I had to do was upload the file. This is functionality that people have been wanting for quite some time, and it's very, very exciting that we have this. So sound off. You know what I want to hear. I, I want to hear from you. Was this helpful? Uh, do you have any questions about this? Anything you'd like to see? We would love to hear from you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. And as always, be good to one another out there. Bye, everybody. It's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.